Yes. Well, thank you for having me. It feels like it's been a long time since we <laughs> spent time together. Yes. I did my best. Oh, my pleasure. So, first question is uh, tonight's hockey game. Your thoughts? Um, I feel like we're hitting a boiling point. It's kind of where I'm at. Like, I'm enjoying the, It's been very chippy hockey. I'm enjoying that the Dynamiters are in the lead. Somehow the score clock just got unplugged. Uh, anyway, sorry. Yes. Um, but it's... Well, yeah, that, and I think that's what it is. Like they're just, they're not leaving each other alone after the whistle. So there'll be a play where they're gonna uh, say Nelson's taking a penalty, and then the Dynamiters will come along and do something goofy, and then it'll be coincidental minors. Fair. Yeah. I think so as well. Uh, th like, it's an exhausting game to play the Dynamiters. Uh, so to be doing it with a short bench, like props to the, the Nelson Leafs for, for doing what they can be doing with 15 skaters and one goalie. But to be able to keep pace for three periods in this kind of very physically intensive game is that's a lot to, a lot to ask for for those 15 players. Indeed, I counted 14 skaters, but 14. That's, that's oh, okay. Counted, but, but I'm not. I'm not sure. Could be 15. Math was never my strongest subject in school. I'm being or told you're you're coming in quiet, so I'm trying to turn up your mic. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just we'll up the volume on, on me. And down the volume on me. Are you looking at that? Yeah, I'm just paying attention. Anyway, anyway, anyway sorry. So uh, looking at uh, uh, longer blur, what, what's going on for uh, for the Dynamiters uh, recently? Well, so. Uh, the most recent thing is that the players of the month for the KI came out, uh, which Cam Russell was... I wonder if that'll work better because uh, <laughs> my microphone was turned off. So all, all of those pithy things I was saying uh, probably went unheard. Now you're like way over above. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce that <laughs> the volume. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, you turned that on. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, um, Nobody wants to hear me anyway. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but the players of the month came out, and um, Cam, Cam Russell was named the player of the month for the Kootenai Conference, and Brock Palmer, who was named the Dynamiters player of the month, was an honorable mention, as well as Keegan McDowell from the Dynamiters side. No Nelson Leafs, but there were two players from the Neil Murdoch division named as honorable mentions, Barrick Hughes and uh, Josh Garlow-Bell from Grand Forks. Okay. So one thing I would mention yeah. that Brock Palmer, the uh, actually, yeah, Brock Palmer, the leading scorer, yep. uh, number seven um, on the uh, scoring, and, and the only other player in the top 20 for the Dynamiters, Keegan McDowell, at number 17, I think. Yeah. So I, t I talked to the coaching staff before the uh, before the game, and um, they're kind of happy with that, um, which means that they have um, a lot of team, a lot of players chipping in with points. Yes, they, uh, do. they don't have one one or two players that they ha they they have to rely on, uh, which is a good thing because I thought uh, Palmer tonight um, hasn't been the Palmer that, that 
we normally see out of out of Brock Palmer. Uh, Keegan McDowell's been all over the ice. So he's been he's been impressive. Yeah. Um, and Palmer's been doing a lot of lot of little things, uh, digging and getting the puck loose and whatnot. Uh, but it seems that he's just not quite on 100. percent So. And his his role has kind of changed since Russell came back. Yeah. Because Palmer was. He was also in this playmaker for the team and had a lot of assists. Right. And now this last month, he, he's scored a lot of goals. And now Russell's picking up that role as like playmaker. So it, it's, that might have something to do with it as well. Is that a adjusting role for Palmer? But, yeah, um, still playing well. What's your thought on, on uh, the newest Dynamiter, uh, Ryan Skite? I'm excited to have him. Uh, it's a little heartbreaking that he's wearing McDonald's number, <laughs> but uh, Bryce so, McDonald, of course, out for the year with with a broken leg. Yeah, yeah. So, which is sad. So that I think there's just that little bit of like pulling on the heartstrings a bit with that he that he's wearing the same number as Bryce McDonald. But at this, that being said, the emotions aside, I'm really excited to have Skate on our team because that adds just that more depth down the middle for the Dynamiters. Right. They brought in um, Brady Daniels to win face-offs. Yep. Now they brought in Skype to win face-offs, and they still have McDowell and, oh, who's the other centerman? Um, uh, Russell's the, the other centerman. Pardon? Russell's the centerman. Russell, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, like, th- that's fantastic people to have down the middle for the team. So I think I think that is really exciting. I, I was kind of sad to see Connor Zidane um, being on the other side of that trade. I, I thought he would be the um, the quintessential, if you will, um, power play quarterback. Uh, he nice. could he could handle the puck really well, um, but in order to get a, a quality player, you have to give up a quality player, especially in your own division. Yep. And uh, I know Ryan Skite uh, uh, will fit in with the, with the Dynamiters with his grit, uh, his speed, and and. Uh, I remember last year, every time that Columbia Valley came to, to play here at the Kimberley Civic Center, Ryan Skite was always a big part yeah. of their effort. And uh, I look forward to seeing him kind of fit in with, um, I think he'll be playing uh, probably, uh, I want to say, with, with Kennedy and, and uh, uh, who else? Uh, that line keeps changing a bit. Yeah. Um, been Coran on that line. Coran uh, uh, most likely will be on that line when he comes back from injury, because yeah. uh, he is injured. And and then of course you got Jackson Bohan um, away tonight as well. Yeah. He's in Surrey playing with the Eagles. Um, oh, he him. he and Braden Coran were both called up to Surrey, uh, but Braden was injured last week against the uh, Fernie Ghost Riders, so he's unable to, to go That's down. But bad. but Jackson Bohan um, uh, going to be making a name for himself down in down in Surrey. He sure will be. Um, Good for him. So. Uh, it'd be good for him and good for the Dynamiters for him to get that kind of experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so power rankings. Uh, yes. There's a couple. Well, I did power rankings. and I, I noticed you put the Dynamiters in the top three finally. <laughs> so, so I don't get to choose. It's what the stats say. <laughs> well, let's, let's just say they, they've had uh, the third least losses in the league. Yes. Um, and uh, leading their division, and of course the Columbia Valley Rockies uh, coming on strong. They're only three points behind the Dynamiters. Dynamiters having mm-hmm. this game in hand tonight, um, but the the Columbia Valley Rockies uh, got to be moving up as well. Uh, they are. They're fi- ranked power ranked fifth, and that was a big improvement from where they were before. Yep. Uh, and also same with the Dynamiters. I was kind of, with my first power rankings of the year in October, I was rather critical of the Dynamiters, but at, at the same time praising them, they were finding ways to win in games that they shouldn't be winning. Now that's flipped, and they are winning games outright for the most part. There was a couple of close games that they had to go to overtime, but during that 12-game winning streak, for the most part, they were rather convincing wins. So they, yep. are, they are doing really well, and they're... Therefore, their statistical performance reflects that. I talked to the coaching staff uh, prior to the game as well, and and asked him how he thought his his defensive core was was shaping up. And uh, he had to say that uh, he's extremely happy with the the progress um, that the defense has made um, throughout the year, because yes, yes. that uh, arguably was going to be the the challenge for the Dynamiters this year was uh, realistically uh, a very young defensive core. 
um, and uh, he thought that they would maybe win a lot of games six to five or five to four because he was really happy with his forward lines. Yeah. Um, but like you say, the, the defensive core has has made great strides, and they're winning two to one games, uh, one nothing games, and and uh, the close close games, and their their defensive is playing uh, as well as as he could hope for. Which is what we're seeing tonight as well is the the defense doing well. Uh, the other thing that I did was the power rate or not power rankings, um, the clutch scores. So looking at players that score goals at timely moments, being on the power play, shorthanded, or game-winning goals. Uh, so it tends to rearrange who the top scorers are, which I think is worthwhile to see who these players are that are, that are doing well. As expected, the Kelowna Chiefs have the top three spots because they rely pretty heavily on their top line and a half. Yep. Uh, but the Dynamiters do have two players in the top 11, uh, being Spencer Kennedy and Brock Palmer. And, yeah, well, in the top 20, even. So look, looking at an uh, interesting thing today, Spencer Kennedy um, cross-checked a man behind the net, and, and uh, uh, Chad McElwain uh, served his penalty for him. <laughs> the, the referee saw the eight, didn't see the one. <laughs> Uh, for the but, and, the, and, and just to say, just yeah. to, to make yeah. a point, um, I think Kennedy is, is a real asset to the team yeah. when he keeps his head. Um, and yeah. again, that was a penalty after the whistle, um, and it was a blatant cross-check, uh, no question about it. Yeah. Um, I think he has to, to take that, that extra thought and say, do I really need to do this? Mm -hmm. um, especially in a close game, a 2 to nothing game, he takes a penalty and puts the, the Dynamiter shorthanded. Um, the Dynamiters penalty killing is, has been perfect, five for five tonight. Um, but um, you don't need to take those penalties. Yeah. And I like him. He's big and he's strong, and, and he's got a great shot. He makes some really nice moves. Uh, when he keeps his temper, um, then he's he's a, a much bigger asset for the Dynamiters. And his, his emotional flares got a lot of attention this week as he made the cover page of the, the paper. Oh, I, I hadn't read the paper. Oh, you haven't read the paper. Oh, um, as expected in Fernie, emotions were high, and there's just this perfect capture. 148 minutes in penalty yeah, or something like that? Something like, uh, th so there's just this perfectly captured moment of him disagreeing or maybe asking what the linesman wanted in his coffee <laughs> um, type picture. So it, it's it's pretty awesome, a nice kind of magical moment that the they caught there. So it's... That piece, of, that part of him is being noticed. But I did want to bring up that the Nelson Leafs, uh, Jack Coran, I hope I'm saying that right. Yep. Uh, is number five in the clutch scoring. So he's got this knack to score timely goals. So that yep. would be something very interesting to watch in this third period. I think another thing about the Dynamiters, I think they're more than pleased with. Uh, is their goaltending? I think that was going to be a question mark coming into the into the 2018-2019 season. Was you've got a, a young goaltender in in uh, uh, Adam Anderson, um, and then bringing in a goaltender, uh, Brett Anderson. Yep. Um, I think that was going to be a question as well, along with the defense, as to whether or not they could um, they could withstand the the rigors of, of junior B hockey. They both have goals against under three, so uh, I think I think that a that answers that question. And uh, looking at tonight's game, I thought Anderson uh, made a couple of unbelievable saves yes, that the, the Leafs could have gotten right back in the hockey game, save for uh, great saves by uh, young Mr. Anderson. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's been a nice one-two punch that the, the – well, I guess it's not even a one-two punch. It's like 1A, one 1B one <laughs> is the type of situation that the, the Dynamarys have. So uh, it seems like the team and the coaching staff is confident with regardless who they put in the net, which yep. I think is – it's really important to have, especially down the stretch. In case a goalie does get injured, you've got a very capable 1B goalie or 1A goalie. Yep. So I, 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 I think it's awesome for our team. And I'm sure the Dynamiters are extremely happy that they do have that, that to rely on. So looking at down the road, um, I, I think pretty much every, every team in the world wouldn't mind picking up a good quality defenseman. Uh, to kind of shore up the back end, and I'm sure the Dynamiters are, are in the same sort of boat. Uh, we've got uh, probably four weeks before uh, trade deadline happens, yep. Yep. or the final trade whatever, deadline, whatever yeah. it is, January 10th or 11th, whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure the Dynamiters are on the lookout, uh, but I think if, uh, if the Dynamiters went into the playoffs, 
uh, with the team that they've got on the ice now, they are very comfortable yeah. with where they're at. Absolutely, and that's what Derek's been saying as well. The team is very comfortable where they're at, and it, they're quite good going with this 23 players that they have right now. Exactly. Well, Josh, uh, we're getting ready for a second or third yes. period action. We appreciate you coming and chatting with us. My pleasure. And uh, you can look for Josh's blog on the Dynamiter website. That's correct. Thanks, Josh. Dynamiters.net slash blog. <laughs> well, I, ju I just go click on the link. <laughs> Fair enough. That works, too. <laughs> anyway, Josh Lockhart, Blogger's Blurb. Thanks, Josh.